great. Our speaker is spaced out. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Rick Hitzman. Welcome to Althea. How many first timers do we have here today? One, two, keep your hands up. Three, four, is Daryl around or somebody? Uh, we want to welcome you at least with a flower. Uh, just to show our appreciation for you showing up here and if you are so inclined or feel comfortable please don't hesitate to talk to me or one of our greeters get your name on our email list so that you can continue to receive announcements that's really the best way to know what's happening here at Althea there's always something going on all right so um, I will do announcements first, and then we'll get into an opening prayer, and then we'll get into our wonderful message today with Doug. So today is, or no, June 1st was actually Oscar the Grouch Day, so I'm sure you all wanted to know that, uh, which leads me to what do you call a really cranky shaman with bad breath and osteoporosis? A super calloused, fragile mystic hexed by halitosis. That is just hysterical. Class is coming up. Uh, <clears throat> Kathy Humphrey, she's not here today. Uh, she does Althea Center's Community Connections each Thursday at 11 o'clock to 1230. Uh, I hear wonderful things about it. She um, you know, she puts in a lot of work uh, picking a topic. It's a way to stay connected to the community and to various topics about what's going on in the world and in the community and locally. Uh, the Enneagram class <clears throat> begins this Tuesday, June 8th. Uh, this is with Julia Foster. Is Julia here? No? Okay. How do you use the Enneagram and knowledge of your type to expand and connect with your higher self? As I said, this begins June 8th, uh, and you can register for it on our website, or you can register for it here, too. Uh, let's see. Those are really the announcements for classes, but um, where's Sue? Is she... Oh, Sue, do you want to um, come up and speak about... Uh, Sue is going to talk about our Althea Community Outreach Program and also a class that she is starting calling he called Healing Meditation 3. And in addition to our regular classes, um, today after the service, uh, starting roughly, uh, I know it's kind of like herding cats, but around 12.15ish, we are going to by 12.30, begin our first team assessment with the Visioning Committee. And this was advertised in the newsletters. Uh, for those of you who are new, Althea is going through a marvelous transition, and we wanted to nail things down using spiritual principle. So this team meeting, uh, and anyone is welcome, anyone can come, uh, will be, I think we're going to meet in the library, does that sound good? Or the library, oh yeah, <laughs> library's over here, thank you. <laughs> That's the kitchen. <laughs> the library. Uh, and it's just a way to start using spiritual principles for how we want the future of Althea to look. And as I said, anyone and everyone is welcome. It's going to be led by Arika King, right? His last name, Arika King. And uh, it's Reverend Arika King, correct? and Reverend Mary Jo Honiotis, who uh, will be here by then. So it's gonna be an exciting time. So I hope you can all stay for that. All right, Sue, come on up. Well, good morning. I just wanted to talk about a couple of things I'm involved in here at Althea. One is uh, the classes, the healing. Um, can you hear me? Is that better? Yes, A pyre like that? Right there. Right there? Okay, that better? Um, a couple of things I'm involved in here at Althea. One is the healing meditation classes. 
So, well, what is healing meditation? Um, I'll just talk about it briefly. It is a style of meditation where we use visual, um, visual imagery with intention and attention to empower ourselves to create our lives. And um, I have a number of classes, a series that we have here at Althea. And class number three, Healing Meditation Three, which is a deep dive in doing your inner work um, on your relationships, is coming up this Saturday. Now, there are three pr prerequisites, but for people who've had Healing Meditation One and Two, we would love to have you join this class on Saturday. And I'm probably going to open up a Healing Meditation uh, Module One, which is the beginning class, on a Tuesday, maybe later in August. So look for that on the announcements. And the other thing I wanted to talk about today is our uh, outreach program. How many people here know that we have a community outreach program to help uh, folks in the community? Great. Well, I'd like to tell you just briefly what that is. It's a program where we get together a group of uh, kind individuals that want to give an hour or two, maybe every week or every twice a month or once a month, whatever time you have. We meet uh, over Zoom once a month and do some planning. And then we go out into the community and help individuals who are either homebound or some, for some reason maybe unable to get out. And what kinds of things are we doing? Well, we um, are giving folks a ride to Althea. We are visiting. Um, we have one individual who is in a nursing home, and you know the nursing homes aren't open yet, so we have to schedule and go in to visit him. And we uh, sometimes drop off supplies if someone who's homebound needs a few things at the store. Um, and what else have we been doing? Um, we have been providing some outdoor walking for an individual who was injured and needs to um, strengthen the back in order to heal themselves. So um, we'd love to have folks like you join us. If you uh, have some time in your life and want to open your heart and make someone smile, um, go ahead and call or use the email and notify uh, Sarma. And she will help coordinate you into our group. And then um, also, if you now that Althea is open back up, if you know some people who uh, we haven't seen them for a while, some faces that are missing from the congregation that you think maybe we should be checking up on, um, let Sarma know, and we'll get that uh, that person's name into our list, and so we can check in on them and make sure that they don't need something, or maybe they need a ride in to the services or something like that. So let us know if you'd like to help. We'd love to have you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Sue. Last weekend, we celebrated uh, Memorial Day, and <clears throat> I neglected two very important items, uh, which actually turned out to be somewhat timely. Um, we have been having uh, a renovation going on in conjunction with a grant from the historical Colorado Historical Society. And one of the people who was very involved with some of the construction and the terracotta work, uh, he became a very strong Althea advocate and really established a relationship with our building manager, Daryl, and he passed away. And so I wanted to acknowledge his great gift to this building. Uh, he worked on what are called the eyebrows, which is an interesting term. And then today uh, is June 6th, which is uh, D-Day. And I neglected last week to ask um, if there were any veterans in our congregation. And I'm going to do that now. So if you are a veteran, would you please stand? And let's give them all a big hand. Please. Thank you so much for your service, and thank you to all those service members who are not here today and who are no longer with us at all. And we just really acknowledge the service that they gave to this country. Uh, D-Day was uh, 
June 6, 1944, 77 years ago. All right, let's do an opening prayer. <clears throat> And so as we just breathe in and breathe out and listen to that quiet and whatever sounds and noises in our environment, we acknowledge them as signs of life. And there's a temperature and there's a feeling of just being alive. And when we get quiet, we can finally be in tune and in touch with that divine presence. And we just let it wash over us. So individual, so unique, everyone wears the face of God, of spirit. And because spirit is everywhere, we know that spirit, the one mind, the one power is present within each and every one of us and we in this room are united to each other. There is no separation. When we put our minds to it and our hearts, all that separation, all that feeling of being different, of being divided, of course we are unique, but we are still one with each other. And I know that everyone's presence here is simply a way to wash away the weak, to come here to be rejuvenated with seeing new faces and seeing faces we know. I was about to say old faces and that would be me, but we'll just leave it at that and to just revel in this camaraderie, in this beautiful, beautiful building, which will be celebrating its 100 year anniversary next, next year. And we know that we are the recipients of the founders of this building. It is simply a different iteration than it was 100 years ago, and we are their beneficiaries. And so as we bask in this light, we know that we can take whatever we get today out into the world and we can be a beacon in our own unique ways, simple or complex, whatever our decision, whatever our choice. We represent spirit and we take that love into the world because the world, as we know, really needs it. And so in our own unique ways, we are each of us thankful and grateful. And I know that I am so thankful and grateful for everyone here, for Althea, for it simply being a presence in all of our lives and a presence in our community. And with gratitude, I simply know that Love will win somehow, some way, and we can be there when it does. And so it is. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Doug Fisichella. Oh my God, our speaker's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, right, that's right. All right, so we have a different kind of a message today. It's going to be a message of music, the soul of music. And so this is going to be a special message from rock and roll singer, songwriter, and musician Doug Fisichella, who has a long history with being 
a member of Althea, being its board president. And he will be joined on stage by several musical guests for some intense soul searching music and quite a jam session. Uh, Doug is a man of many talents. He's an IT guru, singer, songwriter, musician. He's the author of Spiritual Practicality, The Seven Keys to the Mysteries of the Ageless Wisdom. And he began his studies of metaphysics and world religions in his early 20s. And so please welcome Doug Fisichella. We have before Doug, so just, you know, put that in parentheses. Uh, our reading for the day is from our member, Dick. Come on up. I'm sliding before I start. Let's see what happens. Um, adjust it. Lean into it so people can't see my face if I do that. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, okay. Uh, topic today is music. I tried to do some research online. Well, I did some research online. I'm trying to find maybe a good little story or a, some poems or something like that. And what I discovered was some uh, quotes, lots and lots of quotes uh, on music and soulfulness uh, connected to the heart. And I thought, wow, these are really good. So what I did is picked out a few of them, and I'd like to share them with you and um, see what you think. So we'll start with the first one, my, one of my favorites. Actually, these are all kind of my favorites, so we'll see how they go. Um, music <clears throat> unwraps the heart, sings out the prayer, dances the spirit, and opens the soul. Mary Davis. A lot of these were written by either contemporary people or way back in history, so some people I don't know at all. Here's the second one. Music fills the infinite between two souls. And these were Indian name, starts with an R and has half the alphabet in it. The last name is Tigore. Music has healing power. It has the ability to take people out of themselves for a few hours. Elton John. Music is the divine way to tell the beautiful poetic things to the heart. Your tango. There's some interesting electronic websites on here as well that uh, I don't know. That doesn't have a specific name on it. I love music. For me, music is morning coffee. It's mood medicine. It's pure magic. A good song is like a good meal. I just want to inhale it and then share a bite with someone else. Hoda Kabbalah. Music in the soul can be heard by the universe. Latsu. Music and rhythm find their way into the secret places of the soul, Plato. Sometimes music is the only medicine the heart and soul need, tinybuddha.com. <clears throat> One good thing about music, when it hits you, you feel no pain, Bob Marley. I'm not sure Bob Marley felt pain anyway. Beauty of music enlightens the soul and fills it with ecstasy. Another Indian name, Debrishishish Niradhanda, something like that. Uh, music give soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. Plato. And finally, beauty is only skin deep, but music touches the heart and soul. Dick Bevinglow. 
I couldn't resist. <laughs> uh, thank you. All right, the man who needs no introduction, <laughs> Doug Fisichella. <laughs> I want to thank Rick for stealing my whole act. Those are a lot of the things that I'm talking about. And I'm going to talk about how it is that that is so. Why does music touch you and that kind of thing. So this is, this is my talk. I don't know if you remember last time I was here. I was very manic about writing everything out and making sure that I had it all together. And then somebody told me a long time ago, just trust yourself. Trust the people in the audience will ask you for what they need and you'll give it to them. So here it is. We're going to start with a song. Daryl, Chris, Rick. So I've done some teaching over the years and I've done some playing over the years and um, I had not combined them until recently. So. Um, when they called me up and said, hey, could you come down and use your guitar and talk about the music as the communication of the soul? I was like, yeah. All right. So this is a very beautiful song from John Denver. I'm going to share it with Daryl. It's, uh, it's all part of healing, right? Like a walk in the rain, like a storm in the desert, like a sleepy blue ocean, you fill up my senses, come fill me again, come let me love you, let me give my life to you. Let me drown in your laughter Let me die in your arms Let me lay down beside you Let me always be with you Come let me love you Come love me again Like a mountain in springtime, like a walk in the rain, like a storm in the desert, like a sleepy blue ocean, you fill up my senses, come fill me again. Put away the 12 string for a second. Yeah. Talking to you guys. Um, so in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and God was the Word. The entire universe has been manifested based on vibrations, right? 
And I do have a book. I have copies over here. Anybody can go on plug them over and grab it. The only thing I actually need to take a book to read it. Two stumbling blocks. Number one, the Bible is not the word of God. It's the word of the devil. Number two, it's the word of God. Say what? Oh, yeah, there we go. I used to do this. One, two. Look at that. Now we're banging on all eight. All right, so that original vibration is, that's like a poetic way of saying that the first idea, let there be light, separated light from darkness, and then there's a third, which is the relationship between the two, and that's the trinity that most of the religions of the world are based on. That trinity manifests through the logos, the, the word for word in Greek is logos. So the solar logos is the god, so to speak, of our system, everything within our solar system. And within his world, there are seven planes of manifestation. Seven planes, starting with the physical, then it goes liquid, gaseous, and then there is the buddhic plane, the atmic plane, uh, a plane called anupadaka, which just means parentless, and then adi, or the finest plane. Now, all of our existence actually resides in the lower physical plane in, with relationship to the consciousness of the Logos. Now, in those seven planes, each of them is subdivided into seven subplanes. And each of those seven are divided again. So what we have is the physical world, liquid, gaseous, and then set the four of what they call ethers in the physical plane of, the, uh, of our world that we grow up in and live in. Well, music, based on vibration, is a communications tool that we use to get across to people on more than one of those planes. Because our physical planes are part of the cosmic physical plane. All of our planes are part of the cosmic physical plane. There's a relationship between the dense physical and then the next one being liquid, having a relationship to the emotional set of planes, the astral planes, and then the gaseous to mind. Now what we have is the ability through music and vibration to appeal to each other on more than one of those planes. So anybody remember James Bork and the uh, Body language, the book that he wrote back in the 70s, they got the 738.55 rule. 7% of what we say, the way it's understood, is based on the words we're using. 38% uh, is cadence and uh, tone. And then 55% is literally body language. So if you come home and your wife looks at you and goes, Hi, honey, how you doing? Which message are you going to get, right? The high happy, or are you going to get the body language? Well, music uses tone, rhythm, um, and a whole bunch of other things, including mind. Because when I write a song, I write the lyric, I use mind. When I use tone, the color of a tone, I can go from an A major chord to an A minor chord, and I can make it seem sad or sullen, or uh, mystical, or even sentimental, depending on the way I choose the notes. Now, everybody's got the same notes to choose from, but the way we use them, that's tone. That's how we uh, communicate. And we even talk in terms of color. So here's a D chord. I changed one note, and it kind of changes the whole thing. Uh, when I first picked up a guitar, I had a broken collarbone. And uh, I figured out I could move my arm like this and it would be, it didn't hurt. So I started fooling around with open chords and changing them. That sounded pretty and I was trying to write a song about my daughter. I wanted to write a love song about my daughter, but it wouldn't come. And uh, my wife at the time said, what about I saw you running down the sands of time? And I said, wait, and it reminded me of a dream. And within a moment, like within a half an hour, I had the entire song written when it was fighting with me. So we have to kind of allow music to write itself and trust the process that we're tapping into. 
because now that moves out of those three levels of physical body, uh, emotional body, and mental body, and up into the intuition, and that's where we're communicating soul to soul. So if I have an intuition or I have something that comes down through me as a feeling, my job as a musician is to try and use those tones, those color chords, in order to give you the feeling that I had when I wrote the song. Another thing that we use is rhythm. Now we just played John song, which is really beautiful. Is this cutting out? No, uh, sit in front of the microphone. I always had trouble with this thing. Are we hot? There we go. So, where was I? <laughs> All right. So that John Denver song, it's written in a 3-4 timing, which is what a waltz is. So it's got this flowing thing, and it makes you just kind of want to move like that. Well, that just as an experiment, um, I changed the chords around a little bit, but these are the exact same chords, a little inverted, and put into a 4-4 timing, and it's going to give you a completely different feeling from the same exact notes. same notes, I'm doing a different rhythm, and I can give it more of an upbeat thing. There are some things that musicians can do that is kind of deceptive in a way, too, because we can write a song about one thing when we're really talking about something else on a different level. So then we're trying to sneak into that intuition, and I don't know about you, but I love looking up, hey, what was the real meaning of that song? You know, you look up online and you can find out what the meaning of the song is. So David Gilmore said, you know, you can take... Uh, a happy song and you can lend it a little solemn idea by using a minor chord in it or you can take sort of a sad topic and sing about it over a major progression and that'll lend a little bit of hope to it right so we're gonna do a song a little bit later called the dream which is it sounds like I'm singing about a woman I can feel you or the air that you move through I know I know you as you flow across the room, but what it's really about is the mysteries of the universe. They are always portrayed as feminine, alluring, veiled, mystical. And uh, I was doing this one time and a guy from the audience yelled out, scary. <laughs> Perhaps that kind of figures into it too. But it's all based on vibration. Now I have this guitar here and I hit an E note, right? But that's not the only thing that's going on in there. There are harmonics that are residing in that note. So when I hit that E, the first thing that the string does is it begins to vibrate. And then it basically divides itself in half and begins to vibrate that way. And then in quarters, and it vibrates that way. And those are called the harmonics, right? So if I want to bring out, um, let's back up just a little bit. The, the tension of this string and the length of it is what's tuned to make it turn into an E, right? Well, at the 12th fret on a guitar, I get another E, because that cuts the string exactly in half, right? If I came up here, I can get another E if it was an electric guitar. There's not enough frets here. But I can bring out that harmonic with the whole string by just kind of muting it. So that's that harmonic note, and that's the first harmonic that's riding in there. And that's the second harmonic, and if I if I really want the purest tone, I would pluck it in the middle like that, and that would enhance the root. But if I pluck it all the way back here, you hear how much of that, there's kind of a tinny thing that's riding on top of it? 
So just like the planes, the way I was describing before, reside within one another, these notes, when I hit that E note, or if I hit an A note, the other A's or the other E's all reside in there. That's one of the reasons for the 12 string guitar. We do an octave note above the string. So when I hit the E here, if I hit it on this, it's got both of them. And that's what makes it kind of sound shimmery. So we can kind of use that in order to create what we're looking for in order to communicate the message we're trying to, to get across, right? So this A happens to be 220 cycles per second. This A will be 440, and the next A will be 880. So look at the difference between the raw frequency. What's really important is the relationship. And because every A Every E has the other notes within it. We see that relationship. So the first plane of the physical planes we call the dense physical. On the astral plane, we have a relationship to that, a secondary set of vibrations at a higher range. And then the mental, we're at another higher range. And then the intuitive, the buddhic, we have another higher range, but they're all related to each other. So every A has a relationship to every other A, and then when we combine notes together and then alter them a little bit, we can give a different feeling, okay? Now, what we're trying to do as musicians is we use a language, it's a communication tool, right? So we have a language that we use to communicate with each other. And some of it might look kind of silly to you guys, just these letters above the words and then the words are in there and then if you're a real musician <laughs> you read sheet music which gives you a, don't worry about it which gives you every single note that you're supposed to play and everything this is more of a uh, this is about where we go and then use your talent in order to enhance it so Rick I met yesterday Chris I've known for years some of the songs we're doing tonight he knew of because I had played them at Soul Shine when we were doing Soul Shine, um, but he had never played them with me. So we use that language to communicate with each other in order to say, here we go. And then there's communication levels on stage where just a glance says, that's the bridge. Remember the B minor I told you about? That's where we're going right now. And we just communicate with each other. And as we do that and project out to you guys, we're communicating with a different language. And that's where I'm trying to use tone, rhythm, and the other techniques that we have, those color chords, in order to create an experience for you. Now, what this can become, if it's done right, and if the audience is ready for it, is a group meditation. And that's the way I really see a musical performance, and that's why you know, sitting at home and playing your guitar can be really rewarding and fun. I started out as a drummer and you can't play music by yourself. <laughs> I learned how to sing and then I picked up one of my brother's guitars and, and it's all been history. The first time I got anything out of it that sounded like music, it was like, oh my God, I have to learn how to do this. You know, and everybody, I don't think I've ever run into anyone who said, yeah, I don't really like music. They may not like a certain type of music. They may not like a certain style of music. But everybody has a music that speaks to them. So those planes, there's another set of energetic uh, influences called the seven rays. And we're all made up of a different combination of these rays, or again, colors, vibrational energy. All is energy, right? So we have all of these influences. And so a certain type of teaching will appeal to you because of the, the way it aligns with your mind. A certain type of music will appeal to you the same way. There are seven schools of yoga. Because there are so many different types of people in the world, everybody thinks that yoga is hatha yoga, the physical discipline. But it's all looking for union with the divine. So union with the divine basically comes from presence. If you've read Eckhart Tolle, that's a great word for it. 
So if we can live in the present moment, not remembering the past, not focusing on the future, we're in that moment, that's when we feel alive. And that's what music touches on us. So when we're performing a song up here for you, if we're doing well and we've got your attention, what we've done is we've focused all of the minds in the room on the same thing at the same time. And when or how does that happen? I mean, if we do a group med meditation together, I can say, picture a field or take you through a guidance thing, but you're all imagining something different. It's kind of cued by the instructions that the leader of the meditation is doing. But if I'm literally leading you down that path with the tone and the cadence and the things, and I'm trying to create a certain set of feelings within you, think how powerful that is. And if I'm succeeding, then all of us are living in that present moment as every note of that musical piece unfolds right before our eyes, before our consciousness. And we're all thinking about the same thing. Now, I might lose the attention of somebody and they're talking in the back, but there will be a group thing that's going on there. And if you've ever, hopefully you've been to performances that were just mind-blowing, outstanding things. And that's when that audience and the performers are all on the same wavelength and we're all thinking about the same thing and it's going beautifully and you know I've been we call this a jam session and, and we don't really have a lot of people to play but it's a jam session because we had one chance to get together before today and I showed them kind of what I needed to do and then I'm depending on Rick and Chris to just come up with something that fits within that musical language that we all kind of speak together in order to try and communicate effectively with you. So, I said before, I, li I write a lot of sad songs. Well, I guess I had a pretty sad period in my life, and those flow out. And Elton John said, sad songs say so much. We all know sadness, right? We've all felt that loss. And so, how many heartbreak songs can you write? Well, as many as it takes, because everybody's gonna go through that. Now, happiness, <laughs> Maybe not as commonly felt, <laughs> but if we can try and bring you there by writing a happy song and kind of bringing you along on that road trip I was singing about just a little while ago or something like that, we can uplift you and we can reach you. And because we're hitting you in the heart, in the gut, and in the mind, we have a chance to maybe transform the way you think or feel about something. And that is beautiful and that is the goal and when that's happening then that Christ consciousness excuse me I need some water that uh, higher self is communicating down through me out into your hearts minds and souls as well so it is literally the communication of the soul Based on vibration, in my book, I say there is but one language. Creating a world through vibration, on level within level, in lives within lives, and that that story has to be taught in an abstract way, because there's no way that I can point to a concrete truth. There's things that you can only apprehend, wonderful word, on your own those aha moments and sometimes scripture because it's written in that multi-layered way can reach you that way but how many people read scripture a lot less people than listen to music so it's a way of communicating and then like I said when Ginny contacted me and said I'd really like you to come down and talk about music as a, the communication of the soul I was like well I've wanted to teach with my guitar in my lap it's like a dream come true <laughs> just because of the ability to say, you know, that's an A chord and it's happy and that's an A minor chord, and to talk about those vibrations and the way they reside within one another to make up the chord of life, right? So we are made in the image of God, right? That's taught to us by scripture, right? Well, what is the image of God? Well, I don't know. He must look like me, right? So God's a man. 
Um, he has two arms, two legs, sits on a cloud. He's probably old, so let's give him a long beard. And we reverse engineer God because we think our physical image is what's of moment. But what God is, is a creative consciousness. And that, my friends, is what you are. So whether you get opened up by music, by listening to it, it can open up a creative side of you. Or if you're like me and you feel the need to try and create it for yourself, these are all, other than the John Denver songs, these are all songs that I've written in order to try and communicate. And like I said, in that song, The Dream, it's about the expansion of human consciousness. And the last song that we're going to do tonight is called Walking Alone. And again, it's a little deceptive. We are walking alone. We're sharing a path. But within us, we can only have those realizations for ourselves. But I say in the song, I don't mind traveling on this way. It's easy. It's fun. The earth is a really nice place that we have here to experience and express. So whether you're the experiencer of music or the expressor of it, it's a beautiful thing that ties us all together in a way that nothing else does, even something like parenthood. Some people don't get to be parents, but parents know and they share that with each other. So um, thank you for letting me share this with you. I hope um, you found some value in it. And now we're going to play a couple more songs for you, I guess. summertime. I live up in Bailey. We got seven feet of snow in April of May, and May. Seven feet. We had no snow all winter. And uh, I broke my knee in December, and uh, I changed jobs so physical therapy was over, and I'm like, I'm just going to get out and walk, and I'm going to get strong. And then it snowed for two months. I'm like, please. <laughs> all right. So this is called The Dream. And if you listen closely, you'll find that I'm not singing about some girl. I can feel you on the air that you move through. I know I know you as you flow across the room. I'm restless, my mind races on, so senseless. The poker face is on Underneath I know there lies a flame But I don't know if I can play this game I can see you Although the veil is drawn A flash, a sense that I'm breaking through And then the vision's gone How could I know? What could I do? Caught in a 
trap so tender You let me hear Oh, did I find you In a world I can't remember And just the touch of your hand I can hear you Just a whisper in my mind And I know I'll find the truth But the journey goes inside Through the mirror of the unseen eye I can travel time and space Unencumbered, so free to fly And tangled up in grace And just a touch of your hand Thank you. So we're going to do some announcements and then we got one more? Yes, we have a reader. We have another reader? We have reader number two. We did. Okay, I, I was told earlier that there was only oh, somebody didn't make it or something. No okay. What's your, what's your story? Well, good morning. So this ain't your grandma's church, is it? No. Woo, that's it. I mean, we love grandma, but yes, we like to keep things lively and fun. My name is Jenny, and I am on the team that is trying to bring you diverse, various, interesting Sundays, whether it's music, whether it's the message, whether it's a special ritual. Every Sunday is going to be a little bit different, provocative, and hopefully uplifting. So I want to tell you what's coming up. Next Sunday, June 13th, we at Althea will be celebrating Juneteenth and Black Lives Matter. And we have an amazing woman, Jo Bunton Keel, who is a Denver institution. She is an artist, an educator, an activist. And she is going to take us on a journey. It's called Take Off My Skin and Walk Around in My Bones. So if you don't want to hear that, you don't know what you want to hear. And we have a young, amazing artist who is going to be up here singing for us as well. So join us in a week. Two weeks from today on the 20th is Father's Day. It's also the solstice. So we'll probably have a special solstice ritual or ceremony. And you can hear Jay Eaker, who is a father himself and has a really gut-wrenching story to tell about his fathering. And 
also uh, we're still working out the music but we think we're going to have a flute circle Woo, with some drumming so we're working on that one and then it's june 27th and it's pride right so they aren't doing an, a big in-person pride parade this year they're going to do kind of a hybrid so we're going to go ahead and have our pride sunday and we have an amazing speaker uh, who's spoken with us before about his journey as a young man who grew up in a fundamentalist background and where he's gone to since then he's an actor a local actor in the area so that will be fun and then we get into july and then we're going to have fiery young voices where we're going to have some really young people up here doing poetry performance music join us for that in july then we're going to celebrate the heart of home we're actually going to get to hear from some folks who have dealt with housing instability right they're going to tell us what it's like to be out there so join us for that then we have an, a speaker named cindy cleveland i'll tell you more about her but the message is keep coming Keep inviting your friends and neighbors. You can invite grandma too. I know I said that comment about her, but it's okay. She can come too. But keep, keep rolling out and we just look forward to seeing you and we're just gonna grow bigger and bigger as we all come out of this interesting past year. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. <clears throat> so uh, before we pray out, we have a wonderful closing prayer with Kendara. Just a few final announcements. Um, <clears throat> many of you may not know Charlie Foster. He is one of our members of our board and he got married on Friday. So congratulations to him. And uh, I actually officiated. It was my second wedding. So it was uh, really, really quite an honor. Uh, Sue Hunt wanted me to mention that her class that she is going to be holding. Uh, Sue, where, there she is. Uh, today is the final day for a break in the price, right? Early, early discount pricing, early bird discount pricing. So sign up for that today. Uh, we do not pass around the plate anymore uh, because of obvious reasons, but we still would like to solicit you giving to your community from your heart uh, we have a basket in the back for the old-fashioned cash, which I love. Uh, we also have a newfangled notion called the dip jar, where you take your credit card and just dip, 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 dip. Uh, that would be $100, so <clears throat> be careful how many times you dip. Uh, you can also uh, become an evergreen member, meaning a monthly deduction. And we also have uh, the ability to register with King Supers, and with Amazon, uh, if you uh, want to donate a certain percentage of your purchases to Althea, the um, community organization of your choice, you can do so on King Supers and Amazon. It becomes Amazon. It becomes Smile dot Amazon. So be very careful if you do register because I made this huge purchase, and it's like, ugh, and there's no way to get it back on Smile. So keep that in mind. Uh, we also have closing, uh, we have uh, prayer partners for those of you who need an affirmative prayer after the final music from our guests here. Uh, they will be meeting Suzanne Hunt, will be over in near the prayer room in the library. And last but not least, I think that's it. What? Oh, reminder for the visioning group, right? And coffee, anything else? There's coffee, cookies, and I think there might be a couple pieces of chocolate left. No, I don't know, but excuse me. Um, so check it out. And uh, is that it? Is that it? Okay. All right, Kendara, why don't you come up here, please? I'm not gonna stand up. All right. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? 
it's such an honor to be here. Thank you. So um, let's just get silent and, and go within and connect with spirit, not only in each of us, but in everybody that we encounter. And let us pray that this beautiful sense of connection which we've received today go with us and strengthen us. And as we connect with people throughout the week, let it expand and let the love, light, and healing not only go out to all of us, but within us. And let us remove and relinquish and release any illusion, any delusion of anything that would make it seem any other way. Let us say thank you with love, light, and healing. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Kindar. Beautiful. All right. Doug and his band of renown, Chris Evans and Daryl. And Rick. Yes, Rick. I met yesterday. <laughs> Daryl and Chris I've obviously known for a really long time. But we put these things together um, pretty quick. And it's based on that kind of understanding of music itself. It just gives you the ability to, to communicate that way. So this one's called Walking Alone. And it, again, may seem like it's just about walking alone, life's journey and all of that. Um, and we are all walking this journey alone together, right? Those aha moments are personal. Um, but we're all on the same path, and they'll converge. And we have groups like this where we go, I really... I really feel like I'm a part of that group. But the realizations that you come to in a spiritual sense come to us individually. But it's not a sad thing. Being alone in that way is actually a happy thing. So that's, that's why I used major chords. Look at me, I'm using my own techniques. All right. Everything I need Seems to find its way to me Oh, and now I can see That's the only way It could ever be The course of the river may change But it, it always finds its way to the sea And I know Seems to fall silently And I'm walking alone Trying to find my way back home Oh, I'm walking alone But it seems so long to be on my own I kind of like just traveling on this way And you know there's so much to see When you're just living oh, Day by day And I don't try to be Anything at all you see Cause I know All I'll ever really need Are the things Already inside of me And I'm walking alone Trying to find my way back home I'm walking alone But it only seems that I'm on my own
Of the infinite one For eyes that see All illusion is gone And I know in my heart That I can never Ever be alone Thank you, thank you so much for inviting me here